Okay, so uh, hi, how are you doing? So the pandemic continues and again in this semester that is fall 2021, we are launching our educations and learning online. So, but I believe that compared to our last year and even the previous semesters, this time we are, you know, equipped, more equipped to cope up uh, with this situation. And perhaps you also, you're more resilient to learn better and to be used to and habituated with this, you know, new normal and online phenomena. So uh, I am Riyaz Islam, a professor at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering here at Sejong University. And uh, what I am, you know, coming up with as a special topics in software, so that is perhaps you saw in the syllabus, that is, you know, statistical learning. So uh, in this week, the first weeks, we'll be confined ourselves uh, with the introductions of this, you know, important course. So, uh, and this has part uh, two, so that means this is the part one and the part two will be followed after that. Uh, so uh, let's see that uh, what information we have uh, in the beginning. So uh, if you are familiar or if you have some idea, then you know the statistical learning is basically, it, it refers to a wide range of, you know, set of tools for understanding data. We, we like to understand because all around us is data and we like to understand the data. So we need some tools. So the range and the set of all the tools that perhaps we can uh, accumulate uh, in a statistical domain. So that's called statistic, statistical learning. And it can be divided into two, you know, categories broadly perhaps, you know, let's say supervised statistical learning. So that basically, you know, uh, try to build some statistical models uh, for predicting and estimating an output based on one or more inputs. So that means we have some inputs and we like to, you know, predict some output variables. So that's the idea in supervised learning. And then unsupervised learnings we have. So in unsupervised learning, unlike supervised learning, there we don't have any kinds of output. But still, we like to, you know, have uh, to uncover, you know, some sort of structures within the data and relationship within the data. So that's the purpose of unsupervised learning. So uh, we will take some examples, uh, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, or a statistical problem as a whole. But before that, it's worth to, you know, mention some of the, you know, uh, you know, things like, you know, news related, you know, everybody likes to be in the news. I don't know everybody or not, but some of us. So uh, here, you know, let's see that what we have is, you know, let's say this one, this news, you see, the fighting addiction or denying care. Now what it means, you know, this is particularly, you know, in, in US context, United States cons context. So, you know, opioid, now, opioid is basically, you know, a, a, a product that's coming from actually, you know, opium, you know, the opium. So it, it's, it's, it's basically, you know, uh, there are some medical drug uh, that can be used for, you know, painkiller. So and then people and then opioid is really very useful and very, you know, effective drug for painkiller. Right. But, you know. There are people, they actually misuse this medical treatment. So rather than, you know, having medications, so they used it for addiction purposes. So there are certain states in the United States, you know, and so they have some different laws that who can take this medication and who can't. So, uh, for example, you know, this next care, this is a health, you know, uh, medical technology company. So they, you know, analyze the data and based on the data, they, you know, uh, have some software that software recommends based on the person history and then other data that this particular guy uh, actually is eligible to have this you know drug this you know opioid as a painkiller or not so and most of the times many many things actually happen that you know 
uh, even though they are pe there are people they who don't have any bad records, but because of you know uh, flawed algorithms and some problems in the algorithms uh, or, or problems in the statistical analysis, uh, they don't get the health care, right? So that's why these things came into the news, and this news was, uh, was uh, published on the Verge in 2018, and and so they they show that you know that uh, even though there are so many you know abuse. For example, you see, in 2020 alone, uh, in USA, so almost, you know, 100,000 people, so 93,000 people were killed just because, you know, they, you know, took as a drug, as, as abuse of, of, of this, you know, important drug, right? So, uh, so that's the thing. So, and, and definitely, I mean, we, there are people they who are who are who in who are in need, but they don't get it because of their problem, because of this you know flaws. So what we need to do, we need to design the is you know AI systems or machine learning systems, statistical you know system or analysis you know more precisely, so that the innocent people they don't they don't become you know deprived of the care, right? So, uh, but definitely, uh, I mean, uh, we, we are not allowed to take and we, it is not a good idea that to abuse or even to take, you know, this, you know, very life threatening, you know, drug that's coming from opium and, you know, about the chemical compound that's coming up from heroin and many other things. So another, you know, a news that can be shared, you know, that's recently that's 2019 news. Uh, you know there is a spacecraft. A spacecraft, you know, is Starcraft. Starcraft is basically, you know, war strategy. So, how about I mean, I just you know, uh, right now I just you know turn off this you know video. Okay, okay. So, a spacecraft uh, is a basically a complicated war strategy game. It's a game, right? Now, this game, this is a video game, but very interestingly, you know. Uh, the deep mind you know they come up with some computer program that call you know alpha star program this AI program that basically can play spacecraft very easily so and recently deep mind company was purchased by Google so that's why uh, it says Google's alpha star AI crashed this starcraft you know war strategy game whereas a human you know perhaps will get very difficulty you know to play and then uh, to complete this game but you know uh, this you know this this you know alpha stars they basically you know win you know in, in pro gamers they were pro gamers you know by 10 one okay so uh, and, and they are this deep mind company also before they came up with some other kind of you know very interesting you know software computer software so that is you know go it, it, you know about that go go game so they came up with this alpha go in 2016 so this alpha go also very you know statistically sophisticated and they can play this very sensitive game very well and even you know this alpha go actually defeated uh, very master Go players, you know, and, and perhaps, you know, he is one of the Korean master Go player, maybe Mr. Lee or something, I forgot the name. So this is, that's most powerful. Then you have Chase, you know, long time, uh, and, and, and perhaps you have heard of the Deep Blue that came up in 1907, and at the time, the Deep Blue actually later on actually defeated the very world champion in Chase, you know, maybe Kasparov or Karpov, I forgot the name now. So, and then also recently in 2018, uh, another improved version, you know, this from the same company, perhaps DeepMind, they come up with Alpha Zero. Now, so these are some, you know, uh, I mean, behind is machine learning, statistical learning, those things. Then uh, probably you have heard of another name, so that is called you know, uh, IBM Watson, it's basically, you know, Jeopardy playing. So that means you, <clears throat> you ask questions and the people will answer that. And they who are very, you know, talented guys, you know, there and actually, you know, uh, in many games, those, you know, professional, you know, and talented school person, they actually were defeated by this IBM Watson. Now, IBM Watson, basically, it can answer to any question, but definitely, you know, it didn't happen in a day. So what IBM Watson you know, had in, in background, so IBM Watson itself learned so many things from its own mistakes, yeah? 
So and step by step and gradually it knows that which is right and which is which is wrong. So the underlying mechanisms is all about statistical learning. So that's the news. Now let's see, you know, some of the statistical learning problems that probably that if you if we if we learn this course and from this course we'll be able to apply our understanding, you know, on these sorts of problems. So now we'll have series of examples uh, that we'll talk about, you know, this um, statistical learning application domain. So uh, here is the thing you see this is you know uh, there is a waste data in the book that I will be suggesting in a little later you will see that. So this is called a waste data and this is basically income survey information you know for some people you know from the United States and specifically you know from Atlantic region. So in the left you know the waste means salary right you see there is this is the data that you know uh, this some sort of we say kind of plotting so in the x-axis you have age and then in the y-axis you have wage or salary so uh, perhaps you know there is a relationship between this you know age and wage so as we see that as the in age increases as it increases so maybe salary increases and then again the decreases so this kind of phenomena or relationship we can find out and also you see there is another variable if we can see the air and you see the Year, which year you know we are you know conducting the salary we are serving the salary that's also plays some role because it has a linear relationship as it makes sense because as time goes by you know the inflation occurs so definitely salary also increases and then you also have another you know uh, data so that's you know the salary also we can interpret and we can plot against education level you know perhaps we can you know and relate that you know if education levels let's say lowest level is one and highest education maybe graduate degree master's or doctoral degree so if we have that maybe this is the highest salary and this is the lowest salary so that's very much you know maybe it can be predicted some sort of you know linear relationship this is also linear relationship but here is not linear little bit non-linear relationships you have so now how about I mean if we consider this all of these variables age, year and education levels and then we try to predict the salary or estimate the salary then uh, how 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 that happens right so so that's you know one kind of problem uh, that you know should be dealt uh, by statistical learning problem now let's say uh, the waste data that we saw definitely you know uh, it's basically predicting a continuous or quantitative output values right we 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 have you know some sort of you know the variable here this a is er education level but you see this ways if you see the ways is somewhere between here to here or maybe from somewhere to here to here so in between so in between it, it might take any values it might take any values right so that's why you are saying that you know this is you know a predicting a continuous or quantitative some sort of quantitative you know output values so uh, if we just take at the at this age what is the way so perhaps this one so this has a very specific quantity some sort of right but then there are some you know other uh, category of so so this kind of problems the ways data that we right now saw this we can uh, you know uh, labeled as regression problem then we have you know some other kind of problem that where we are uh, not interested in uh, this kind of quantitative or continuous output values rather we are interested in non numerical values so that means we, we will just do some cate category or qualitative output so that kind of you know problem we can say classification problems for example think about you know any a, a stock you know market index for example this is standard and poor's is stock index um, stock market index so s and p is a you know some stock market they analyzes in in the usa you know largest 500 companies and they they see what is the stock market size it's increased every day or decreased you know that kind of you know phenomena they observe every day they are interested to see or they estimate the things or they you know calculate or keep tracks of the things that uh, stock market increased or stock market decreased for example uh, let's say and the, at this particular day that we see that let's say we are that they are you know monitoring for the last five years or three years or even four years something whatever it is so how many days you know the stock market increased and how many days it decreased so that kind of you know uh, statistics they have now 
compared to all of the past day what will be the in the next day so that's the uh, things so we are interested or or let's say this curve is interested that you know uh, compared to all the past uh, days that we are observing for the for the duration we are observing so what is the you know percentage of changes percentage of change in the stock market so that it means so and and in stock market changes so it might be down or it might be up so you see the left panel we are talking about this panel is considering the previous days percentage changes in the s p market for the days for which the market increased or decreased okay definitely i mean we are not uh, understanding data in great details now we are just giving an idea so ultimately we are interested that you see the it, it's the direction what is the today's direction the today's directions will be downwards or upwards so that's our end based on the previous data right and it's, it's particularly let's say it is yesterday data and and if you see that you know based on what happened the previous day or yesterday can we determine or can we estimate can we predict the today's direction so that's the idea actually okay so how about you know last two days you know previous you know based on the past two days and based on the past three days what will be the today's directions and if you closely see that you know the percentage changes in up and if the, in in the down in the down you know bucket or in the up bucket up bucket or down bucket it's pretty close so it is really hard you know to uh, tell that you know past within based on past two days or three days or based on previous day uh, what would be the you know today's directions so that kind of you know uh, that is a classification problem but that kind of problems you know is is it's not easy to address but fortunately there are some you know method that we can apply called quadratic discriminant analysis model that you know we learn you know maybe after you know many lectures so this kind of i mean the main you know take home is you know take home note is this kind of the classification problem so there are regression problem that we saw from the ways data and then this kind of you know classification that it is yes or no true or false up or down that is called classification problem now you know uh, sometimes you know we might need to understand let's say we have some customer in let's, in let's we're talking about the marketing setting so we have many customers and sometimes we are interested to you know group that customers uh, right the group one or group two based on some interest or whatever it is right so that's you know sort of things we say clustering problem it is neither you know regression problem nor the uh, you know uh, classification problem rather it's uh, we are trying to understand that we just have inputs but we don't have any output there right so uh, we are interested to clusterize that all the customers we have for example you know uh, maybe maybe you know there is some gene expression data uh, right now you don't need to know what is that gene expression data let's say you know what is gene so gene is human gene we're talking about and the human gene is uh, you know it's a that's that's provide us the hereditary characteristics so of the human being right you know that in human we have you know cell and within the cell you know we have nucleus and within the nucleus then we have chromosomes and then packed with some you know there's a double helix structure so that's called you know dna and the sequence of this you know you know sequence of this you know dna or rna and that's you know composed that that is actually we are talking about the gene now each gene you know has uh, different kinds of you know uh, characteristics features expression and measurements those kind of many features it's just gene measurement have many features right for example so here you know there are some let's say let there there are let's say 64 gene okay so one two three four if you if you just count it there are 64 and let's say this is many features but let's say we just you know somehow you know pick or choose two features okay so one features let's say z1 and another features let's say z2 now if we just plot let's say any particular gene and what is this you know z1 features values is this one and z2 features is this one right features mean you know kind of any kinds of you know features or dimensions we can say right now we don't need to understand we will understand this thing later on so then i mean you just plot all of this gene and then you you got i mean from here you know perhaps we may understand maybe this one is one group this is maybe one other group this is maybe another group this is maybe another group this is maybe another group so in this way right and based on some sort of you know uh, algorithms 
maybe you know if we try to make some group you know more appropriately maybe you can hear you know that let's say this is one group two group three groups and four group right so this is pretty good but then you might have another algorithms that algorithms might say that no we have more groups right like for example here maybe we have 14 groups so whatever it is that you have uh, thousands of genes or something and then we can you know group that gene together and to represent some sort of a special interest group or clustering so that's kind of problem we say clustering problem so so SL problems you know also can be kind of for example let's say we are uh, interested to identify the risk factors for some specific cancer let's say pro-state cancer so here is the data of, of that you know uh, that actually very old data maybe in, in around 1987 or 89 something around that time so <clears throat> this data it says I mean what is this data you know it, it's some you know say is you know pro-state is specific antigen so that is some sort of you know measurement right some you don't need to understand that what this then how it works it's some variable that's it and then it's a cancer volume and this a prostate weight in a age and some maybe some what is this or uh, maybe this benign prostate hyperblasty amount and then you have seminal uh, you know vesicle invasion then you have this you know capsular penetration then you have glisson score something that kind of thing so there are you know uh, maybe you know there are 97 rows okay 97 you know rows maybe 97 patients actually and then you have nine columns so that means uh, 97 you know patients and you have nine this kind of features that is weight age and these things if we just want to see the data first just you can plot kind of this kind of plotting so you see the diagonally we have all the variables so let's think about this age right if you see the age so age is from 40 to 80 and then with this A's, what is the value of PSA? Because this is actually the main, you know, uh, specific antigen, pro specific antigen. So if you see the A, with the A's, how this, you know, uh, PSA vary, right? Also, the how this PSA vary with this, you know, cancer volume. How the PSA varies with this, you know, pro weight, you know, varying. So if you vary the weight, pro weight, then uh, what is the you know how this PSA value varies so <clears throat> is it possible that if we just you know take all of these variable together and then combine them jointly you know we can try to understand that that which you know what are which variables how much you know risk it carries so that it's responsible for prostate cancer so this kind of you know uh, data we can plot in this way so you will you will you some of the problems that we will do will 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 work with the some sort of data and then based on data we can see and it is also always a good idea <clears throat> that if you have you know this kind of data you always you know plot it even the big data but you try to you know understand the data first you know just you know you got the data and you, you just you know you start exploring the machine learning algorithm statistical algorithm that's not a good idea first things need to understand that we really understand the data itself right <clears throat> because understanding data is actually you know vital so these visualizations of data uh, uh, you know has some importance okay so <clears throat> then you know let's see what is the next next you see the statistical learning is also this also covers the, for example you have heard of for example recommendation systems now in recommendations you saw you watch youtube videos uh, and then you know after watching a video you see there are you know list of videos recommended video and perhaps you click you know some of them sometimes especially in music or video whatever in many or even you know you are doing you know shopping in you know coupon or let's say you know amazon so you also see the recommended the what you know kind of you know product that you are interested in and and that actually we are every day this happening to us right the for example you search something in google or neighbor and then the next day you see in your social media pages you know some sorts of you know you know recommendations is coming so that's also the part of the statistical problems <clears throat> now other recommendation systems or recommendation system how it usually works for example let's say you know collaborative filtering how it works see uh, there are just let's say these two users are there now <clears throat> these users you know these both users they basically have the similar reading habits 
you know, let's say from the past, you know, one month or two months of data, you know, the algorithms or software, they track that, okay, these two users read both of this. Now see the next day, maybe this user read this, you know, book. So definitely this will be recommended to the user because they have the similar, you know, reading pattern, right? So that's the idea of collaborative filtering. Then you also have content-based filtering because you see that this user basically read, you know, this content and because, you know, this content is similar, so see this content will be recommended to this user. So this is how, you know, this, you know, recommended recommendations or filtering works. <clears throat> So, and then you have, what is this one? Understand the risk factors in the heart disease, right? <clears throat> so, uh, okay, I'm pausing. Okay, so um, you see that, you know, uh, why the heart disease, you know, occurs, you know, heart problems, heart attack, those kind of things happen. happen. Now, uh, this is uh, really a very, still now a great research area that where statistical and machine learning, you know, things are coming every day to predict the heart disease more accurately or more nicely, and different models are coming also. So, and these data basically, you know, coming from, you know, South Africa. So the, the, the red ones, and you see these variables is basically, this one is, you know, I, I guess, you know, systolic blood pressure. This is, you know, that, you know, he has the habit of tobacco or not, you know, and then it has, you know, ideal that is some sort of, you know, cholesterol level, right? Bad cholesterol, I guess. And then it had a family history. In the family, they have it or not. And then you have obesity. That uh, What is the relation to obesity? And then you have alcohol or then A's and that kind of things, right? And this is, this red means, you know, the patient has you know, heart attack. And this, you know, green means, you know, no heart attack, right? So that that is the things. So <clears throat> now, again, like, you know, that the previous examples that we, we had, so here is also, for example, here, the previous example, we had this one, right? That in prostate cancer, so similar that, you know, combinedly build a model that jointly involves all of these different kinds of risk factors, right? So then together, so we can uh, perhaps build a better model and we can see the relationship between the data, right? So <clears throat> you, this is another, you know, uh, statistical you know, learning problem that is, you know, email spam detection and very much every day we receive, you know, spam, right? You know that. So this data is, you know, a very old data, but it's still for our, you know, example, this fine. Uh, this data is basically, you know, uh, there are 4,600 emails you know, that sent to individuals, you know, named George, and he was working in HP labs, that is Hewlett Packard lab, maybe before 2000 or something. And <clears throat> they manually, you know, uh, label this email that which is spam or which is really email right spam or email <clears throat> now uh, the goal was to build a customized spam filter now they did a very simple you know techniques the simple technique is you know they just you know saw the you know the words you know the most fre frequent you know most commonly words in in that email okay then every email for example <clears throat> they they saw that you know the word jars eu hp free or maybe this exclamatory character, the A do, remove, this kind of things, right? And then they saw that, you know, uh, for example, <clears throat> this word, the, you know, that the remove, uh, you see, then if it was a real email, then in this email, this word, the percentage of this word was really very, very less, remove. Because, you know, if you have a real email, why they will use remove, right? It is the probability of using of this word remove is very low. But if it is remove, uh, maybe you saw that in your every email, in the very you know, bottom line, usually it helps that, you know, what is, I mean, if you don't like it, uh, please, you know, remove or sub, you know, from, from this list and, and click here or something. So that means there is a high chance that is an spam email, right? So that's why the probability of the occurrence of the frequency of the occurrence is, you know, 0 0.28, whereas in the email, the use of this word is 0 0.01. I mean, this is the relative frequency, of course. The, you know, and you see also this, you know, in spam, the use of, you know, exclamatory mark is high that, you know, uh, but, you know, if the word HP is mentioned, that is, you know, more likely this email. So this, from using these differences, we can categorize that which email is spam and which email is not. Now, based on these things, any future predictions might be done. Okay. <clears throat> 
Now another you know statistical problem is you know this one. So mm, uh, this you know identifying the numbers in the handwritten zip code. Okay, so you see that you know <clears throat> especially in the U.S. Uh, it's really matter. This is a big country, and um, you know the 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 writing of each person is different. So if you if you're a human, if you just closely look, you understand it, right? But <clears throat> so, um, uh, but if you take a picture and image, and if you try to, you know, recognize that from the image, it's really, really hard job. So, but definitely, this is an old problem, but it's still, uh, for learning purposes, this is good. So, you see, zero might be of different kind, one might be of different kind, if you take the photo, and if you take this one, and this one, so then you just, you know, train your algorithms statistically and then you know here we can apply this you know some specific technique called discriminant anal discriminant analysis and we will you know try to understand that things later on so this is a another statistical problem <clears throat> now uh, we also have i mean uh, as we you know a little bit we said that you know gene expression and cancer class for example you know this kind of you know this is data here are actually you know a, a, a large amount of data there are 8,000 genes and 18 you know, breast cancer patients. You know, this is a heat, this is called heat map. Okay, this kind of, you know, representation, we say heat map. So, so this is, this is actually that heat map. Okay, so, <clears throat> and this each row in a very small, small row. So this row represent a gene. There are 8,000 genes. So that means there are 8,000 row from here to here. Okay, and then each one from this side, this is column. So this column is there are 80 patients. So that means each column is a patient and each row is a gene. Okay. Now <clears throat> we'll see that for a particular patient, okay, for a particular patient, for example, let's say in this column and this gene, you know, express or gene doesn't express. What is gene express? It means that if a particular gene, you know, works uh, inside us, inside our cell, that means then we can say that gene is expressed. And if it doesn't work, if it's just silent, then we say the gene doesn't express. Or we say the gene expression is high or gene expression is low. It, if it is working, so that means gene is expressing high, gene expression is high. If it is not working, we say gene expression is low, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's say we have breast cancer patients and then, then you know, let's say we just, you know, uh, zoom, you know, this uh, uh, this one and this is that one, okay? So this is the zoom version of this one. So <clears throat> for a very, you know, particular, let's say very particular gene. So let's say this, this gene T, what is this, TLK1 something and also this gene, let's say this gene or this gene. So we just take this gene and we will see that a very particular, you know, part this very particular patient, for example, this one, we see this is, you know, low expression. Green mean low expression and red mean high expression, right? Now, <clears throat> if we just, you know, uh, you know, marked all these, you know, cross points. So every small point actually cross point between gene and a breast cancer patients. And we understand that, that at these patients, this particular gene is actually, you know, mm, uh, express high expression is high or expression is low, okay? So, in this way, a particular, we can see a particular patient at what gene expression are high or we can see across the patients a particular gene at which patient it is high or which patient is low, right? So, that means a large amount of data can be easily expressed in these kinds of, you know, you know, heat map. Now, how this heat map is, is actually generated, all the behind is actually statistical learning. There are some, you know, calculations called z-score, you know, normality and and those kind of things okay <clears throat> now based what is the purpose of this one now we can what we can do you know we can you know some order and reordered and then we try to okay you know clusters the gene and patients for example you know this is actually a modified version of this heat map so this is you see this one is actually you know this area is you know some green this area is green this area is high so that means <clears throat> this gene you know at these patients you know, these are, you know, some, you know, high expression. Now, based on this kind of things, we can see these patients basically, you know, can be divided into six categories. For example, this one, 
this one this one one two three four five you know six so six groups so that means all of these you know breast cancer patients can be you know grouped into six categories this where this very high expression we can say this you know basal subtype breast cancers and then you have these are this they are the normal you know breast like and these are you know kind of you know luminal subtype so there are you know different kinds of subtype you know cancers and this kind of you know heat map that we will try to understand later on in our statistical problem statistical learning course and then you have this you know uh sl problems in you know for example this landsat images so these images what what is this for example first you know this this may be in Aust country austria you know austria you know austria so this is the real map okay land uses in austria maybe some remote area that where this is land what is the uses of that one for example this red one this red one means it's simply soil okay and <clears throat> then you have you know or, you know this is this is red soil then you have cotton and then you have you know uh, festerian subtle then you have mixture then you have gray soil and then you have dumb gray soil okay there are one two three four five six you know different kinds of you know uses of land i'm not you know specifying which one is what but let's say there are you know six you know kinds of land uses you know the land i mean uh, in the earth land okay now so <clears throat> manually we level okay this is the red area this is the you know this yellow area this is the cyan this is the blue this is a manually we do we know that what is this what is the uses of this area what is the uses of this area we know these things okay this is the run <clears throat> now from the satellite we we just capture some images okay okay so when we capture the image we use different frequency you know you know let's say frequency one and other time we take the image using frequency two and other types we can take frequency three and another images we consist of frequency four so that's we say you know spectral band one spectral band two spectral band three and spectral band four now what is that if you use actually let's say x-ray your image will be different if you use gamma ray your x-ray will be different if you use visible light your you know image will be different so that's why it based on the frequency or spectral band the images are different now now after taking this you know four kind of images the same land images in different bands now using this you know images now we can predict we can estimate you know that our you know real uh, land uses and you see it's pretty much you know accurate it's, even though there are some some error for example here is is, is something is not not mess this is the real one and this is the estimated one but it's still so this is also some sort of you know statistical learning problem <clears throat> and also another you know statistical learning problems that we are presently facing is coronavirus right you know there are lots of you know algorithmic machine learning statistical you know calculations learnings you know going on you know to you know understand and uh, to provide the better public health management so we, we every day we do some sort of you know learning and predict you know based on situation based on you know vaccination data based on you know uh, detection data and and whatnot right so this data i collected in in the in the beginning of of this year uh, last semesters i taught one statistics course so there i use this data then you know statistical learning problems also can be applied to address complicated disease analysis okay complicated disease analysis so <clears throat> so so he, here is the thing actually you know this is our own you know our own results on publications that we published you know you know th this result we published in nature you know cancer zin therapy and this result we published in another paper another research work that we published in as a scientific reports this is this is the last year and this is the previous years so there you see that how we can determine this you know uh, survival of a cancer patients you know and survival might be different kinds you know overall survival you know distant you know reluctance free or survival or many kinds we don't need to understand that things now so what we are trying to say the different kinds of cancer and survival analysis we can perform using uh, various kinds of genomic data so that we say multi-omics analysis okay and there we, we, we prove we showed that how this gene prominent one and prominent two they express you know based on you know various kinds of genomic and multi-omics data for example you know you know methylation data expression data and survival clinical data and those kind and then we also you know 
saw that we can actually you know address the very complicated disease like alzheimer and alzheimer disease you know for example that we constructed a multi-layer multimodal detection and prediction model based on you know some some sort of ai and this ai is basically is is very simple that in a sense that you collected different kinds of you know electronic health record data it might be your pet image data mri data or maybe some aptitude test like cognitive scores then genetic data also demographic information like age education genders and then you have some other kinds of you know lab test vital signs and then you just combine all of these together in a very specific way and apply some we applied here is random forest and those things and then you come up with some sort of model that model you know uh, try to establish the relationship between this data so that's also a statistical learning problem <clears throat> okay so now uh, let's see sometimes i actually you know um, uh, use these uh, slides so statistical learning problems is really huge we can uh, apply in environmental studies you know natural science and studies and online reviews shopping recommendations travel business biology engineering that i explained marketing companies human rights and social justice so and here is a youtube videos uh, you can actually you know learn uh, this is the address youtube dot you can actually copy and then you can see that they are you know they are they are very famous you know uh, statistic expert and statistician uh, so they are working in very you know great great places so you can see that uh, how they you know apply their things and, and and what is their perspectives so even a company like you know microsoft company like google you know you know they all hire you know uh, statistical experts now so statistical learning is actually everywhere so <clears throat> ultimately you know this is a three credit course and we will have you know three hours uh, lectures every week and uh, big, but because it is online so that means you know we, we will have you know 38 minutes minimum minimum at least 38 minutes video for uh, one day lectures and because we have two days in a week uh, two lectures in a week so total is you know at least you know 76 to 80 minute lectures but it might be more uh, yeah because you know uh, sometimes I really need to explain something more so uh, online mode is you know, we will have the main the blackboard but you know selected lectures or if i invite some guest lectures uh, so uh, in that cases we'll have wavex or baha zoom um, at, at this time definitely uh, or maybe you know if i invite the invited lecturers from you know other countries sometimes we might need to adjust the you know time and definitely theory tutorial and demonstration lectures and this is the attendance rules uh, you can see from the slides that five minutes you know before the lecture 10 minutes after the lecture is started and uh, after that it will be late and yeah so and after 15 minutes it will be absent but because it is online you have now more flexibility to take the lectures uh, based on your opportunity and time uh, schedules so <clears throat> for online lecture time attendance and other regulation please you know follow the university regulations and also my blackboard posting that you know i'll be doing and also see that at each video that that what is the time limit that for each lecture sometimes the time might be you no know, little you know be adjusted based on the you know video length yeah so you have to you know comply that things for example you know sometimes i may give you know 40 uh, 50 minutes you know uh, uh, must you must was 50 minutes to uh, you know rec recognize your attendance and sometimes is 30 minutes is fine okay so i hope that uh, you you will um, uh, follow that and <clears throat> because it is an online uh, lecture so we uh, don't have much opportunity to communicate among the fellow students so what i'll be doing is you know creating a kakwa uh, you know group chat so in a statistical uh, as a statistical learning name and i'll be posting the details uh, next week so you can all join uh, by clicking that link and i'll give you the password or code so then you can communicate among yourself i mean in the group of course and <clears throat> but definitely you know while you will be communicating maybe there are many messages or something i may not respond those things so if you have any question particularly to me definitely you will have to write me back okay so <clears throat> the assessment is uh, you already know that we have you know 25 percent you know midterm exam for 25 percent final exam and 40 percent is assignment so you know so that means homework quiz you know group projects are very analysis reporting problems and those kind of things and <clears throat> we'll 
combine and sum up all of this score that you are getting in assignments and then we will calculate you know based on this 40 percent so that means the score obtained from all of the assignments will be proportionally converted and we have attendance 10 percent right but now you know please note that this is a, a special topics right so uh, it will be it will it may not give you the exact flavor like you know regular lectures uh, sometimes you know most of the works might be needed to be done from yourself from your own understanding from your own efforts but i will give you a guide definitely i'll give you the lectures but you know implementation programming many things please you will have to come up with so uh, have the attitude to work hard otherwise you know this course might be difficult okay course material the pdf slides will be given and the video lectures will be you know shared definitely so you can see that and more reference i'll be giving you from time to time and we'll use python in this program and but you know <clears throat> in the book that i'll be referring to is this is the book that is you know introduction to statistical learning so in this book it uses you know r programming but you know i'll be using and we will be using you know python programming okay so <clears throat> The syllabus and outline, we, I mean, our main motto is understanding regression, classification, and clustering issue. So we will have selected problem solving and implementation using Python, okay? So um, in regression part, definitely linear regression, uh, that is simple and multiple linear regression, and we will understand the classification, that is logistic regression, uh, also, you know, discriminant analysis, and we will study resampling, Resampling mean after we come up with a model, then we need to, uh, you know, uh, try to check the model, test the model. So based on a different kind of, you know, testing and training from the training sets, you know, we need to, uh, we will continuously, you know, change the, the, the training set and then we will see that the model, you know, output or the model performances. So in this way, we say this resampling. That means sampling, we will, we will change the sampling in training certain. So there are some techniques called cross-validation, the bootstrap techniques. Then we will also see model selection. Why one model is, you know, uh, working better and the other model is not. So that kind of things that we will we'll see that how to select the model. And sometimes, you know, we need to put some extra information, you know, to work the model better. So that's called model regularizations. We have some objective and how to you know better fine tuning that you know model itself so that means uh, that's called in regularization so we'll regularize the model so that that is the one of the main aspects of integration at least we will try to have some generous idea uh, on that uh, and, and then we will also have some other idea but that's you know less focused but i am very much interested to explore these topics also if we get you know sufficient time so that is called you know nonlinear problems that might include some you know decision trees, random forest, and then, and then you know support vector machine, uh, and we also have the unsupervised learning. So that's called you know principal component analysis and clustering method. And another very interesting analysis that I personally like that is survival analysis. That we want to see that whether a cancer patient, let's say, survives five years or three years or not. Okay. So if he survives three years or five years, you know then we have some sort of very otherwise effective you know understanding and this is not only about the patients you can also you know design a let's say motor or let's say device a products coming from your company and you want to see the the this you know uh, validity and survivability of that you know systems as a whole that's also you know some sort of survival analysis or we can say uh, okay so we'll see those things later so yes you can contact me through the email that i prefer and uh, it is better that you contact through Gmail because that's in you know, a more you know convenient rather than my official email address. And so, and whenever you do email, please write your name, ID, and course name. Yes, you need to write the course name because I'm also giving another course. Otherwise, it would be you know inconvenient for me that which course you are trying to say. Okay, uh, and definitely you may come uh, to my office following uh, all the you know COVID nineteen precautions and then i mean guidelines so but please you know uh, have a prior or appointment through email so that's i recommend and then you have this email structures please don't say you know very you know uh, very you know nonsense and then very in inconvenient and unprofessional email that i don't like so 
so this is the email structure. So this is my email address, and then you, you provide the subject line. You know, there is a subject line. You write your statistical learning lectures. Maybe you are talking about assignment, grade, or project, or exam, or meeting, or whatever. You just explicitly say. And then you mention my name, that Professor Yazid Islam. Then you introduce yourself with your name ID, and then what is your issue? Describe that in details. And then and again, it's good to give your signature, your name and details. So that's the you know email structures that you are going to follow. I may not respond to you if you don't follow this, you know, email. And please, you know, I mean, uh, do not contact, you know, for me for problem solving, assignment solving, and also understanding a deep subject matter by email because that's not feasible, right? So for that case, you have to come here and we have to, you know, uh, sit face to face, okay? So we generally will discuss lesson related results in the class, but because it is online, so we have very limited scope, you know that. Uh, but uh, I'm sorry and I'm sad that I cannot interact with real life. But at least, you know, in the group Kakwa chat or also by email, sometimes you may come in person. So that, that way we can deal. But this is the best things we can do amid this pandemic situation. Because at least we are continuing our education and learning, even though we have some inconvenience and difficulty. But this is the best what we can do uh, given that condition situation. Okay. So uh, follow these things. Uh, do not submit your homework by email. That's that's not acceptable things. And whatever we do, we'll follow the assessment rubrics that that I explained. That you know midterms, final, and those kind of things. And we will follow the university you know rules and regulations. Definitely, it doesn't matter what you think and what I think. We always follow blindly our university rules and regulation. And always I like the honesty because that's really the great thing and idea of education. Education is not only just you can do some mathematics. Education is you have to practice the honesty. And I'll have to practice the honesty from your perspective, from my perspectives. And something more we'll be explaining. And I'll be also learning. This is a learning opportunity. I'll learn from yourselves also, from you guys, because you are young. You can do lots of you know, hard work. So many things, you know, I will learn from you. I'm ready for that. So and, and please, you know, note it down that, you know, you you, you cannot be absent more than seven times you know total 30 total total 30 or 30 you know two lectures we will have because total 16 weeks so that means 32 30 to 32 lectures so out of that 30 or 32 you can be absent maximum seven times otherwise you will be problem and fa will grade will be assigned okay this is the recommended book and introduction to statistical learning so they are the great guys uh, the James actually they are they developed these things uh, but you know uh, this is the first time that I am actually you know offering this course in this uh, university uh, so uh, in the name of a special you know topic software because it is not undergraduate course it is basically a graduate course but I am you know trying to give you know you know this course to undergraduate level so so you can uh, you can you can see that this is uh, not an easy course so only who you have really good interest and you know something about his statistics you know if you know his statistics basic statistics like hypothesis testing you know what is p values if you know about the distributions if you know you know those basic things and and you also have some idea about the regression also then you can take this course otherwise this course will not be useful for you because this is originally a graduate course but i am you know providing this course delivering this course so that you know it will prepare you in advance okay and then this is there is the book there is a pdf file in this link and in this link you know this is another advanced book this is more mathematics you know in this book but i'll try to avoid some mathematics you know as of course we will have a lot of mathematics but there is less you know we will use in this course so this is the book for that one and this is the one okay and this is the second edition um, but definitely I have the fast edition but this is also uh, this is okay good no problem so yeah so there is some more you know names you can see you know the for statistical learning I'll upload the slides and this is some resources I mean not only my video lectures you can also take the video lectures from you know these authors itself that means authors of you know these books they also have some lectures at Stanford University, and so they are also the great lectures. 
you know but maybe you know I, my lectures will be a little updated and some more references and sometimes my explanations will not be sufficient you can also go back and forth and clarify your understanding based on other resources no problem so there is some analytics you know resources you can see these are some python because we'll use python if you don't know python you can practice python resources and we'll use you know pandas and scikit learn so those are the things so <coughs> Yeah, so this is the thing. So please do hardworking. So if you don't have ability and if you are not interested to the hardworking, you don't take this course. And as I said, I you know you must have understanding of hypothesis and inferential statistics, you know, knowledge. If you don't have, do not register this course. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> so um, uh, let's see. So I'll upload these lectures, you know, uh, now and then you know, i will upload another part maybe one day later so uh, see you next week uh, see you in the next part